Hello, YouTube viewers. How the heck are you? Jailbait here with another episode of Master of Orion. We're playing as the Alkari. We have uh, just branched out of our little uh, spiral arm, and I've already met the um, the Cylons here at Mentar. Uh, we can. I'm assuming that we will reach um, the Bulrathi and the Mershon at Ursa and Lupus, um, but time will tell. We're also ex starting to explore out here into the western part of the galaxy and into the center. The, on our search for Orion, would like to find that and see what it's going to take for us to uh, take out whatever guards it. In the meantime, we've got a bit of colonization building on Krissa, and we are still flying through research like it's going out of style. So, let's continue on. Got some construction done here. Uh, and it looks like both of those places need some. Oh, there we go. I am the Emperor of the Bulrathi. If you wish to keep your flea bitten pelt on your back, you'll give my kingdom a wide berth. Can do, buddy. Can do. However, uh,. Hello. Yes. How would you like to exchange tech? What? These guys actually have tech. So, how would you like to share your charts with me? In this, there is understanding. Perfect. Yes. Now, you have tech. What tech do you have? You have crappy tech. So that's kind of a, a thing where you see that they took fusion bomb and I took. Uh, Fusion Drive, they took telepathic training, and I took uh, something else. So, that's an interesting thing. Uh, I do want to see if they're willing to do uh, embassies. Gold and sweet is honey. Nice. Yes. They are perfectly amenable. In this understanding and we have a trade treaty so walk with the wild spirits good diplomacy so we've got them up at a higher is much preferable to a harsh lesson okay they do not like us being happy with uh, the Bulrathi. These guys, are they at war? Can I tell? Uh, yes. So you see this little red line here? It shows that they are at war with the Bulrathi. So they really don't want us talking to them. Um, I'd rather be peaceful with the Bulrathi than the Cylons because I feel like we could really kick their butt if we need to. I also feel like the Cylons are not going to jeopardize our trade treaty. Look at how much money we're making. That is sick. That is really sick. Um, I really feel like... Alright, I want you to auto-explore now. They're less likely to get hostile with us. Um... Uh, as long as we are in that trade, kind of happy trade medium. Um, we are going to want to send somebody over here to colonize so that we can build a, a base there. Are you exploring? Now you are. So we revealed 23 planets. Most of them are just what they have uh, met the... Silence had already given us. So that's fine. Daenerys and Hoshi discovered. Uh, this guy is doing his thing. What is this? Oh, space monsters. There is an eel here. It's a good thing we don't have to go to these places and... Ooh, there's a rich planet. 
That's nice. One of the things we'll do once we start colonizing heavily is start looking for like an ultra, like a huge ultra rich planet where we can really just churn out the war machine. Okay, got to choose production somewhere. Andromeda, what do you guys got? Uh, I want research. We want hollow simulator. What's your pollution like? Oh, your pollution is sick. So, here and here. And... this so I know that you guys I want this we have so much money I'm just gonna start buying things uh, pollution is at 20 here orbital shipyard So I wonder why some of these places can build these things and some can't. Oh, restricted to planets with moon. That's why. Okay. Um, so same thing. We're going to start spending money on keeping our pollution uh, down. Uh, Robo miners would help. Uh, yeah. There. Have some robot miners. Okay. So Krissa here has the moon, which allows it to do that other thing. Um, and they can turn out colony ships in two turns as opposed to three. But that's fine. We are happy with where everyone is at. So let's just keep it, uh, keep it going. Welcome. To GNN. Hello, GNN. Population has boomed on a Tau Kari colony world. Build relation. Yeah, we've been doing that. Uh, population boom on a Slaw Prime. What does that mean? Oh, that means that we are now at maximum amazingness. Uh, do you have, you do not, so these guys have the potential to go crazy. Uh, they're rich, but they're only medium, so we don't have much production as we probably would like. Uh, and their research is not good yet. Eventually it'll be good. So what we're going to do is we're going to cancel this. Robo miners is fine. Orbital shipyard is fine. Um, but I want everybody working. And we're going to have to worry about pollution. So, pollution first. Happiness next. Okay. And we'll get you going. Yeah, we're making 226 credits a turn. Um, that's just crazy. We actually aren't even making that much from, from the diplomatic deals. Only 73. Most of it's just coming from our colonies. Because they're so well developed. Alright, so we've seen a few more systems. I saw that. All right. Keep it going. Oh, I just looked up here and I saw no research. I'm like, have we not been researching? I was going to go crazy. All right. So we are still out here exploring. Good, good, good. Uh, the economy has worked tirelessly on Kay. the minus. We soar ever higher. Oh, and bomber base. Except what? These are fielded with a single high yield torpedo. Huh. 
Interesting. Okay. So, we now have the battleships, right? Yes. Now, we could go graviton. So, here's the thing with the beams I don't understand. You can see that, okay, so we've got phasers here, which is a energy beam. It does 40 damage, range of 40 units, right? Whereas then we have these graviton beams, which also have a range of 40, um, but they only have a damage of 13. But it says that their damage procs are 8. So I have to assume that that means it will proc 8 times. So it'll damage 13 8 times. So that could be, what is it, 80, uh, 104 damage for one graviton beam. But the space is 12. So if we go, if we, if we do some math, it'll do 208 damage potentially with two of these using a space of 24. Our phasers using a space of 24 would do 160 damage. So um, it seems quite a bit less damage. The only thing I can think of is that if we look at the shielding, is this shields? Yes. You can see here, damage reduced per hit is minus 5, okay? So if they have shields or any kind of um, uh, resistance, these will only be doing like 8 damage per proc, which is 64, which is still a bit more than, uh, than the phasers. Uh, but remember, there's only two of them. So 64 damage times 2 is 128, and these things are doing uh, 160 minus 15, because there's only 3 shots, uh, which means they'd be doing 145. So it feels like uh, beams are really good. These types of beams are really good against uh, unarmored or unshielded uh, types of things. Whereas these will do better against uh, anything, you know, our higher shielded stuff. Um, so I don't know exactly, bioterminal percent terrible, uh, how that works. Here we have plasma cannons, which are like, they do the same damage as phasers, but they have a bit longer range and they envelop, which means that they strike the ship. On all four sides so these things take down shields very quickly um, but the space is 30 which is just madness and we have to choose here so I think I'm gonna go for phasers I think phasers on our battleships is gonna be our best call the, un the only other thing is that I don't know no mass drivers are way back there I don't know which things have point defense as we saw before, we definitely want point defense uh, things because point defense is just better. See, here you have Gauss technology, which is shield piercing. It completely bypasses the shields. So these things go straight to the hull. So we could get Gauss cannons that just hit hull, but they only do 20 damage. Um, the only thing is Gauss cannons are a lot like uh, mass drivers in, in that they're projectiles and while we have been using mass drivers I do kind of want to get back to our beam thing. So I think what we'll do is we're going to focus multi-phase physics. We're going to rush over here and get these phasers. Once we have phasers we can start building up our battleships to use them and we'll start doing things like higher energy focus, um, range master targeting units which will Correct for inaccuracies in our beam weapons. Um, you know, stuff that will buff up our beams. And I think that will be very good. So that's kind of the plan. All right. New ship design's been discovered. Let's take a look at what these things look like. So the cruiser looks like this. The battleship looks like this. 
We know that they build them horribly, so let's take a look. Oh, that's really cool. I like that alternate battleship style. Yeah, we're going to go with this one with the battleship. Uh, what kind of... Yeah, we'll go with design C. So, we have the better drive. We've got class 3 shields. We've got the best computer. We've got the best armor on it. So, so far, so good. It's added in a bunch of stuff here, which isn't bad, but I don't think we want this. Um, if anything, we might want, let's see, structural analyzer. Damage done by energy weapons that penetrate. Yes, more? Okay. Uh, increases the chip chance to hit with beam weapons. Have a, uh, uh huh. So I don't know why, but the, uh, uh, that's for missiles. So let's go ahead and throw on a battle scanner and a structural weapon. So this, I think, increases our chance to hit, and the structural analyzer uh, allows us, increases our damage with weapons. So this is the kind of thing we're going for. Uh, let us clear this. We don't want bomber bays. You can see the bigger the ship type, the more slots we have for different types of weapons. But I don't think we need all that. Uh, so let's just clear all of this stuff. And we, as we were talking about, this is six command points, and we needed 450. This is 800. So it is definitely better to build the bigger ships as far as a space to command point ratio. However, we put on a lot of extra stuff. So we've got structural analyzer here. We've got the reinforced hull, which I think is, is pretty crucial. And we're going to want an ECM jammer. There we go. Because missiles, we do not want to deal with missiles. Now, currently, our best beamish weapon is the mass driver, which does... Two DPS. The fusion beams, I think, are still messed up. Uh, they're supposed to be three. So uh, a three to two ratio. So this would be six, and this would be six as well. So damage-wise, I think fusion beams and mass drivers are equivalent. Um, however, oh, no, I think this is right. Because it can proc multiple times. So it's 0 0.5 DPS, but it procs multiple times. Okay, things are making sense. They need to make that more apparent. Um, so since we have all this beam stuff, I think, and, and we're going to be upgrading to phasers eventually anyways, let's just do... Um, oh, but the phasers are going to be equal space as the drivers. All right, so we're going to do drivers here. Um, there still doesn't seem to be a thing with the facing. I don't know what that's about, but whatever. So we're going to have mass drivers here. We'll have another mass driver that's a point defense. Because we can't point defense, yes. With that. And then we're going to have fighter base. All right, so we could almost make two different types of battleships. We could make a big carrier ship that just sends out fighters, and then we can make like an attack ship. Um, I in in other you know four X space games, usually it's better to kind of focus on a single thing. Because then you can fit a lot more stuff and you're not quite so... Um, I just don't know what the range of these fighters are. Because if we make a pure like carrier ship, it would basically have just like the ECM and the reinforced hull, and then a bunch of point defense or missiles that come at it, 
but then it would have a bunch of bunch of fighter base. So let's do that. We'll make, we'll make two separate. We'll make two separate ship types. So this will be our main Mamajama. Of course, we can go with some like tons of these things, but that always seems a little silly to have like a hundred of these bean things on here when we could just like make them heavy mounts. Let's see. Let's go down to twenty. All right, so 20 of these is 40 DPS, right? Um, average DPS is 21. I, I don't trust this thing. I've seen it be weird before. Um, and then if we heavy mount it, yeah, see, the DPS doesn't change, even though we add heavy mount to it. I don't know. Of course, it doesn't change in here either. So it could be um, that this isn't implemented yet. It's just the just space and the cost of it. So for now, we'll go crazy. Just crazy numbers. All right. So we'll have 40 mass drivers. The rest will just have these point defense. Whatever we can do to fill, oh, fill this up. Um, that should be fairly sufficient. Let's go 35 and 18. All right. So total military power for this thing is 13,000. <laughs> But it costs 613. All right, so this one is definitely going to be a, a, a bit of a beast. So let's call this. Um, we've done like sparrow stuff. Let's get let's start getting into hawks and eagles and stuff. Um. Let's see. So this one's a damaging one. Let's call this the Cooper. A Cooper's Hawk is kind of like a... Uh, it's bigger than a Sparrow Hawk, but smaller than like a Red Tail. It's, a, it's an awesome, awesome little Hawk. Probably stands about, I don't know, maybe 8 inches from talon to top of the head. But um, they're awesome. They're really maneuverable and can really kick butt. Uh, so yeah, we'll call this the Cooper. And done. And then we will make a new one. Um, and to separate them, we'll do this one as a normal, its normal look. Sure. Uh, we've got all this cool stuff on it. We are going to get rid of this, uh, get rid of that. We do not need beam stuff. We will put on an ECM jammer and the reinforced hull. Is there anything else that we want? Could do shield capacitor, but I, I don't plan on this thing getting hit much. Um, and then we will clear this, clear this. Clear this. See, if we had torpedoes, I would consider throwing on bombers too, but I think we're going to do something different. So this, this is going to be our carrier. So we're going to fighter bay, and then it will also act as... Uh, do we really only have nuclear bombs? Wow, okay. Well, it'll also act as carrying some bombs so that we can deal with stuff. All right, so this is going to come up. We can have four fighter bays in here. 
and then we will fill the rest up with bombs. There we go. And this will be our pelican. Because <laughs> they carry stuff in their little beaky things. All right. And done. So we've got two awesome battleships. This one says, that's, that's funny. It's got four fighter bays, but it only says, it says it has zero stuff. Yeah. Who knows? We'll give it a shot. Um, so let's see how much these things are. Oh, man. My timer went off like forever ago, didn't it? All right. Um, so in the next episode, we're going to take a look at seeing how, how hard it is to build these things. Um, it shouldn't be too bad because we've got a rich planet with a lot of like negatives on the ship production costs, like negative 50%, which should be good. Um, but we'll take a look at that next time. If you guys enjoyed the video, please leave a like and uh, go ahead and tap that like button for me as hard as you can because it really helps me out, helps out the channel. And if you haven't already, feel free to subscribe, share, or uh, comment. Love to hear your comments. You guys are awesome. But until next time, I have been Jailbait. You guys live free. Game hard.